Well, for today's news and review, I'm going to be looking at Zimbabwe's decision to pay white farmers 3.5 billion in compensation. This is a deal that was signed yesterday, uh, the 29th of July, 2020, and in my opinion, will go down as one of the days which amounts to the biggest shame in African history. Well, according to this Al Jazeera's news article that I'm looking at right now, uh, Zimbabwe agreed on Wednesday to pay $3.5 billion in compensation to white farmers whose land was expropriated by the government. Whose land? Whose land? Whose land was that African land and is that land of Africa? Since when did Africa become the land of the Europeans? They were the invaders. They were the ones who invaded the land, who murdered and slaughtered and committed the most heinous crimes to take over that land. Now, since when do we reward and compensate robbers, thieves and murderers? In my opinion, this sets a very dangerous precedent. We have a situation in Zimbabwe today where the population is under 16 million. A country three times the size of the United Kingdom, which has a population of over 66 million people. What does that tell you? A country like Zimbabwe, three times the, the, the size of the United Kingdom with such a small population. It tells you the extent of the genocide. It tells you the extent of the murder and the barbarism that happened on the continent in that region of Africa over the hundreds of years that they were invaded by the Europeans. Was the blood that was shed by those tens of millions of Africans not enough? of a payment for the land that they eventually managed to get back? Who's going to compensate the Africans for the millions of lives that were lost? Who's going to compensate the Africans who were dispossessed of their land for hundreds of years? Who is going to compensate for the misery, the torture and the wickedness that the Africans suffered at the hands of the Europeans? Please answer me and tell me who's going to pay for all of that. Yet today, Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwean government finds it fitting to be compensating robbers and thieves. Let's not forget that the revolutionary war that eventually managed to take back the land from those invaders only happened a few decades ago. Those very same white farmers who had the land at the time of the revolutionary struggle, let's not forget, joined the Rhodesian army. They joined the army against the Africans to slaughter the Africans in their thousands, in their battle to try and hold on to the land. Some of the same farmers that joined the Rhodesian army and fought and murdered those Africans are the same farmers being compensated today. Where is the logic and the common sense in this sort of approach? Who's going to compensate for Chipongo? Let's not forget Chipongo. During the Rhodesian War, that, that mine shaft of over a hundred feet deep, that mine shaft that, that where the Rhodesian army were capturing innocent civilians and torturing them, torturing them before chopping up their bodies into pieces and putting it down the mine shaft. And then when the bodies and the pile of the bodies filled the mine shaft, they put dynamite down there to blow the bodies to pieces so they could make more room 
when that wasn't enough they poured acid over the bodies to try and disintegrate the bodies so that they could make more room for more bodies thousands of people were disappearing during the time of the Rhodesian War which was during my lifetime during the lifetime of the members in government today in Zimbabwe their comrades are lying dead in the hero's acre those comrades that fought that shed their blood so they could get back their land and today what's happening is those survivors of that Rhodesian war are actually paying the same people who murdered their comrades who murdered their family members what is wrong with the mind of us as Africans today to want to reward, to want to compensate murderers, robbers, thieves and genocidal maniacs? Those white farmers, they can go and farm in Australia. They've got the whole of Australia. They can go and farm anywhere in Europe. They've got the whole of Europe that they conquered. They can go to America and farm. They've got the whole of America which they conquered from the American, Africans and Indians. They can go and farm in New Zealand. They've got so much conquered land in this world. They can go to any of those places and farm. The only place that the Africans just about have left is Africa. But if you look to the south, it's occupied and controlled by the Europeans. If you look to the north, it's occupied and controlled by the Arabs. If we as Africans don't hold on to the little bit of land that we have left on this planet, where will our children's children be able to call home? Where will we be able to farm? Where will our people be able to live in peace without being controlled by outsiders who don't look like us and don't like us? This is a very pivotal time that we are living in as a people. And if we don't make the right decisions today to hold on to the little bit of land that we've got, to hold on to the little bit of dignity and respect that we've got, who in this world is going to respect us? We are the ones who should be getting compensated. Who's going to be compensating those Zimbabwean families who were dispossessed of their land? Who's going to be compensating us as the descendants of those who were, who were removed from our lands in Africa, taken to the Caribbean or taken to America? Who is going to be compensating us? This coming Saturday, the 1st of August, we are going to Revolutionary Square in Brixton, outside the Ritzy, to, to protest and to campaign for our reparations, for our 400 years of enslavement, 400 years of torture, 400 years of lynchings, of whippings, of, of the most inhumane treatment imaginable to man we haven't been compensated for the 400 years yet we are compensating those who actually participated in the murder of our brothers and sisters on the continent it doesn't make sense to me it doesn't make sense family the article goes on to say that, uh, you know, they're trying to resolve this policy of Robert Mugabe, which was divisive. Of course, it's going to be a divisive policy. Robbers and thieves never want to let go of their, of their, um, what they've stolen, of their loot. They don't want to lose their loot. They want to hold on to it by the, they'll hold on to it to, by the last tooth if they had their way. And when they couldn't hold on to it any longer, then what they do is they call on their cousins and their brothers and sisters from around the world to put the squeeze and the pressure around the neck of the Africans economically so that they can capitulate. 
Well, why are we as Africans around the world not being approached and not being asked to come to the rescue of Zimbabwe? Why is the rest of Africa, Ghana, Nigeria and the other African countries not coming to the aid and support of Africa, of Zimbabwe? Until we start moving as one and acting as one, how is it, do you think, that you can eat an elephant the size of Zimbabwe or the size of Africa? A piece at a time. And Africa is being eaten up a piece at a time. And had it not been for those revolutionary freedom fighters in the late 50s and early 60s, we would still be under the thumb and the control physically by those Europeans who had sliced up Africa and taken it for themselves. But because of the bravery and the courageousness of those revolutionary fighters, we now have back our land. But if we have chickens at the head who are giving away our land or who are compensating those robbers and thieves and are not prepared to stand up and do the hard work for self, what it's going to take to rebuild this country, to put your own people at work to rebuild this country instead of wallowing in woe because millions are not coming through the back door to fill individual coffers which at the end of the day is only bits of paper, if we don't fix up, then our future generations are going to be paying the price. We can't criticise and condemn our ancestors who sold out Africa or, or, or who opened the doors to invaders for trinkets if today we are opening the doors to invaders for bits of colourful paper. When we lose Africa for billions of colourful bits of paper, are we going to be, how are we going to be looked at by the future generation? Family, we need to fix up. It says here that the Southern African nation does not have the money and will issue long-term bonds. To, we don't have this sort of money to be paying compensation, yet we're proposing to go around the world begging for money to pay robbers, thieves and invaders instead of going around the world and if you want to beg, beg for money to put your young people into jobs, into work, to create young entrepreneurs, to set up their own enterprises, to support your young people, to start their own businesses, to turn over the economy and get the economy thriving. I have personally visited Zimbabwe and the claim that you're paying these White farmers, for the infrastructure that they, that they left behind, just doesn't stack up. I've visited farms. I've spoken to the black farmers who have taken over these farms. And they told me firsthand that the toilets were blocked up with concrete. That the damage and the extent of the damage that was caused by those white farmers before they left those farms renders the infrastructure uninhabitable and unusable. They've had to rebuild. The Africans have had to rebuild the infrastructure for themselves. Who's compensating them for that? This is a, a sad state of affairs. The day that that agreement was signed is a day of shame, not just for Zimbabwe, but for the whole of Africa, for not uniting behind Zimbabwe and supporting it during these times, which is what you would expect family to do during times of need. All we, the only piece of real estate that we have left on this planet that we can call our own is Africa and the Caribbean and the blood that was shed for Africa and the blood that was shed for the Caribbean by our ancestors has turned the soil red and the soil of Africa and the soil of the Caribbean is still very much drenched in the blood that was shed by those millions and millions of our ancestors. Family, 
Africans around the world, we need to do everything and all that we can to hold on to the little bit of land that we have left that we can call our own. Those Africans that once, you know, lived in America are no more. America, we've lost America to the Europeans. We've lost the whole of Europe to the Europeans. We've lost the whole of Australia to the Europeans. We've lost the whole of Canada to the Europeans. These were lands that were once occupied by the indigenous people of us Africans that are no more. The Europeans, their land was just around the Caucasus Mountains area, but they left the Caucasus Mountain region and they have been invading and conquering and committing genocide across the planet ever since. And they are not going to stop until they control and own the whole world. Well, we've got to do what we can to hold on to a little bit of that, the land on this world. And that little bit is Africa. And if we don't watch out, we've already lost the North. We've already lost the South. If we continue in this way, we will lose the whole of Africa and, our, and the revolutionary fights by our freedom fighters would all have been in vain. Family, this is the 21st century. Let's not go back to those dark days of enslavement. Remember, the enslavers didn't come and enslave us overnight. At first they came as friends. As first they came as philanthropists. At first they came as missionaries. As fir at first they came as traders. And they slowly grew in numbers and started expanding their power and their terrain across Africa until they were powerful enough to subdue our ancestors. And then they took over and they conquered and the rest is history in terms of our treatment and what happened to us. Let's not go back there again. Let's learn from our history. Because if we don't learn from our history, it has a wicked way of repeating itself again and again until we learn the lessons. Let's pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. Let's recreate the Tulsa's, you know, of Oklahoma in Africa. Let's recreate those kingdoms and cities that we once built in Africa that were flourishing at the same time that Europe was in its dark ages. Let's look inwards and let's look to ourselves for the solutions to the problems that we are facing today. Until we start believing that we have the power, that we have the conviction and we have the skills and abilities and the knowledge and the intelligence to do for ourselves that which we were doing for ourselves prior to our invasion. Until we get back that confidence to do for self, we will be forever believing like some of our leaders do that we can't do without the other races, and that we need them to come and save us. We are our own saviors. Family, please like, share, and distribute